The World Bank has approved uh, $750 million International Development Association credit for Nigeria's past sector recovery operation to improve electricity supply. The bank in a statement in Abuja on Wednesday said that the target was to also achieve financial and fiscal sustainability and enhance accountability in Nigeria's power sector. It explained that about 47% of Nigerians did not have access to grid electricity and those who had access faced regular power cuts. According to the bank, the economic cost of power shortages in Nigeria is estimated at around $28 billion, which is equivalent to 2% of its gross domestic product GDP. It stated that getting access to electricity was one of the major constraints in the private sector according to the Ease of Doing Business report. It added that improving power sector performance, particularly in the non-oil sectors of manufacturing and service, would be central to unlocking economic growth post-COVID-19. Joining us now is Rumu Daka, one of the founder and CEO of ZKJ Energy Partners Limited. Thank you for joining us on the news. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. Now, is this the intervention we have been waiting for to end the epileptic power supply? Um... It is, a, it is one of the supports uh, that will um, get us to a more reliable electricity supply. It is not the only one. Uh, it's complementary to other things uh, that have been uh, put in place. As a matter of fact, it's a component of the power sector recovery plan that the government had uh, worked out with uh, the World Bank, AFDB, and uh, some other multilaterals. And um, in, in short term, it is to transition the industry to a more con uh, contract-based industry and um, more reliable service and then achieve some accountability uh, in the sector. Will this in any way boost or hamper the Siemens arrangement to generate more power? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, like I said, it's, uh, it's complementary. This is looking more uh, at the governance issues and uh, sustainability. So uh, it's supporting uh, the tariff shortfall that we have uh, right now, but um, it also incentivizes the industry, uh, particularly NERC and MBET, uh, to put in place tariffs that are cost reflective, but tied to reliable service. So it starts with guaranteeing that there is 4,500 megawatts of supply that gets to homes and businesses and that, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, things that are impeding the discos. Uh, sh tariff shortfalls that have stayed on the books of the distribution companies should be taken out, and uh, there should be adequate uh, provision for funding of the transmission company of Nigeria. It does not deal with the infrastructure. There is no investment in infrastructure coming under this uh, program. Therefore, the Siemens deal is the one that brings investments in infrastructure and, like I said, is, is uh, complementary. This just seeks right. to make sure that the governance framework is, uh, is tight and uh, sustainable. If you were to advise the government, uh, where should the bulk of the loan be spent on? Uh, is it generation, transmission or distribution? Well, like I said, this is not about infrastructure. This is more about uh, making sure that the governance uh, it supports the transition to more contract-based market and uh, a, 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 an industry that is accountable to both customers and, uh, and, and stakeholders. So this is not about infrastructure. The Siemens deal is about infrastructure, improving the uh, network capacity, starting with transmission and distribution, and then eventually um, taking care of the three of them. So there, that's why I said that this is complementary. This is about uh, the market and uh, its uh, accountability framework. Uh, do you foresee an increase in tariff as part of measures uh, to pay back this loan? Well, uh, what we see is that the uh, tariff should go up. Uh, it's part of the uh, of the plan. But more importantly, more importantly is that um, service level go up. And I think that's the, the thing that is more critical uh, that people have more reliable uh, service uh, because currently 
that the tariff that we have has no uh, service level uh, tied to it. So part of this program uh, is also seeing NERC do a few things, like uh, recently it, uh, it's talking about a service reflective uh, tariffs where there are different bands of, uh, of service level and with that, different tariffs. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Wenodi, for your time with us and the insight you've shared. Thank you very much.